what's going on guys arms form coming at you guys today with another video today's video we got some breaking news at detroit lions they went out and they traded uh cornerback jeff okuda to the atlanta falcons um the former first round pick third overall uh traded to the atlanta falcons for a fifth round pick um there was some rumblings going on the last two days yesterday uh for sure i saw i saw kind of late at night a little bit later on at nighttime um, that there was uh, a rumor out there that Jeff Okuda was apparently on the move or the Lions were strongly trying to get rid of him, trying to trade him to another team. Now, there's lots of things to go into this. Now, um, let's just talk about his college stats. You know, he was six foot one, two 202 pounds, uh, three years at Ohio State, Ohio State Buckeye, 83 tackles, one tackle for loss, three picks, 18 pass breakups, two fumble recoveries, and a forced fumble. Played on a killer defense at Ohio State. And he was drafted in the first round, third overall by Detroit Lions 2020. And it was by Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia. Now, he went on to come into the NFL. It was chaos from, from day one. He was already, he was drafted hurt. He had like a core injury, groin. He had a groin thing going on. Three years in the NFL, 124 tackles. Six tackles for loss, two picks. One touchdown, which he got last year. Um, he had a, he had, he had, a, he had a, a interception as a rookie. And he had an interception last year against Justin Field and ran a touchdown in 10 pass breakups. Um, didn't have that great of, <laughs> of, a, of a career so far in Detroit. He's missed 23 games in three years. 2021, he did play in 15 games. Uh, 2022, I meant to say, um, he did play in 15 games. Um, like I said, played hurt as a rookie, had that surgery on both groins. I know the one the one side was really bad, so they had to do work on the other to kind of make it, to, to even it out. So he ended up starting like seven to nine games, I believe, as a rookie. Didn't look good from the jump, looked really bad, and uh, missed a ton of time. You know, came back his second year, got hurt right away, missed all 16, 15, 16 games, got hurt in week one. And then was was never the same again. Uh, then he came back in 2022, last year, and played great. He played great off the hop, man. He was um, played really well. Locked up guys like Justin Jefferson. Locked up a couple of number one wide receivers at the beginning of the year. Played great football probably for the first four to six weeks. Okay, then he started playing a little bit bad again. He was he, he was missing some assignments. He was getting burned. Um, then eventually got benched by the end of the year. Man started seeing him more on the injury report and uh, eventually got benched out of favor with with uh, with Aaron Glenn, secondary coaches, and uh, he never saw the field by the end of the year. So that was his third year last year. Going into his fourth this year, the, the you know, the rumbling started happening. And look what, and look what um, Brad Holmes did. He went out. And picked up guys like Emmanuel Mosley, picked up guys like Cam Sutton, and guys like C.J. Garner Johnson. Now, Emmanuel Mosley is probably going to be our starting left cornerback. I think it's already established that he's going to be there, barring any type of injuries. You got guys like Jerry Jacobs, Khalil Dorsey, who I think is a practice squad guy or or, or a camp cut. But you have you have Mosley and Jacobs as that left corner. Then the right corner penciled penciled in was. Jeff Okuda, um, he was the starting guy coming in, and you know backing him up is guys like Jaron Williams, Mac McCain. Now Jaron Williams and Mac McCain might not even make this team. Okay, um, this is why they picked up guys like nickel cornerback Cam Sutton, picked up guys like C.J. Garner Johnson, and guys like especially this Cam Sutton move was was very big because not only is he a nickel corner. But he played fantastic as a as a starting outside cornerback for the Pittsburgh Steelers last year, Cam Sutton. So there could be now. This is where it gets fun. This is where it gets fun. Now the Lions. This is all speculation. This is all speculation, and this is where it's going to get interesting. Um, you're going to see all kinds of different. You're going to hear all kinds of different podcasts. You're going to hear me. You're going to hear everybody out there. You're going to hear the media and the radio. You're going to hear Woodward Sports, et cetera, et cetera, on what's going to happen now. Now, the speculation is going to go through the roof. 
Now, Sutton can play right cornerback, you know, right, left, wherever he's comfortable. Um, C.J. Garner-Johnson can even play in the nickel, you know. Uh, they're going to have to get guys like Kirby Joseph on the field more. Tracy Walker is kind of on his way back. Um, Tracy Walker right now is kind of penciled in as the starter at free safety. Now, Kirby could be, Kirby has to get on the playing field. Kirby has to get on the playing field. They can play three three safety sets, but they're going to have to get Kirby on, on the playing field. Okuda was kind of, he had one foot out the door. He had one foot out the door, and it's just, you know, it it sucks because he's the third overall pick, and you're seeing guys, and you're seeing everybody, and you're seeing some meltdowns from Lions fans, um, thinking that Brad Holmes got, got fleeced. Um, thinking that he doesn't know what he's doing. Why would you only give up a, why would you only get a fifth round pick? The 159th overall pick for a guy that was drafted third overall. Well, well, 23 games missed, doing absolutely nothing for this organization. You know, playing good football at the beginning of 2022, but then falling off, falling out of favor, eventually getting benched, sucked. And I'm not, uh, I'm not going to sit here and bash Jeff Okuda, but this is just reality of it. Um, when this when this news kind of came out, you saw this fan base. Well, we better be getting a second round pick. We better be getting a third. We better be getting um, you know a high draft pick because he was a high, high because he was picked high. That's not the way it works in the NFL. That that's not the way it works in any type of sport. He has not played like a third overall pick. He has not played like a second over like like a second rounder. He hasn't played like a third rounder. He's barely. I was kind of hoping for a fourth round pick. But this is what he's worth. And I said that on, on social media too. I was like, I told people, expect a fifth round pick for this guy. We're not getting a second rounder. We're not getting a third. We're not getting, we're, maybe we'll start talking in the fourth. But we're probably going to get a fifth round pick. Lo and behold, I just said this yesterday. I, I just said this yesterday to some people. Some people are just delusional. This fan base is delusional. And it's not just the Lions fan base. It's, it, it's NFL fans in general. They just, they're delusional. Just because you're drafted third overall doesn't mean you're going to get a first round pick back for him. It's not the way it works. It's, <laughs> you're not going to get a second. You're not going to get a third. You're going to get a fourth. It's just the way it works. And, and another huge thing about this trade is they had till May 1st to pick up his fifth year option. You know, his fifth year option was $11 million plus. You think Brad Holmes was going to give this guy eleven million plus dollars to do what he does, to do what he's done in the NFL? And I commend Jeff Kuda. He tried to come back, man. He never got down. He, he he was a type of guy that worked his tail off. We we seen it. He was never a guy that was lackadaisical. He was never a guy that coasted. He you know he, he was he, he was never a number one cornerback though. Never a number one corner. You know he had some moments. He had some moments. I think he played extremely well in the run game. One of the most physical corners I've seen in the NFL um, for the Detroit Lions, anyways. Very physical corner. Played the run exceptionally well. Shot in like a missile, but his cover skills were were lacking. Um, you know, he had some moments, like I said, with the Jeff, with the Justin Jefferson, etc. He he did have some moments, but he was never a true number one corner. And I don't want people to think I'm ripping the guy, but this this is a business. Now, pre now since he was traded pre June first, we it's a 2023 dead cap hit of 5.4 million dollars and a cap savings of 2023 of 5.1 million plus. So we saved 5.1 million dollars on this guy. Now we get more cap savings. That's just the way it is. And like I said earlier, the speculations: who's going to be starting at the right cornerback? Will it be Cam Sutton? Will they move C.J. Garner Johnson to the nickel, which he was a nickel for pretty much all his college days? And uh, for the New Orleans Saints, he played nickel for three years. He was an exceptional nickel cornerback and played exceptionally well when he when he was traded to the Eagles and they made him a safety. So we have the firepower here. We have the firepower here to make some moves roster wise. Now the now the draft. More speculation. Are they drafting a quarterback at a corner at six? Are they going to draft Devin Witherspoon? Do they like somebody else? You know, they sent Dre Bly to um, Witherspoon's pro day. 
Witherspoon apparently knocked it out of the park um, on that pro day. Ran fast, looked smooth, fluid, did everything you did everything that you wanted to see in a corner. Now, is he worth a six overall pick? Could the Lions be taking him? Could we be seeing a, 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 a duo of Emmanuel Mosley, who's injury prone, and you know, Jerry Jacobs been injured too as well. And could you see a guy like Devin Witherspoon coming into the fold at six? Maybe. But the speculation is real now. Now this is a speculation. Are they showing their hand? Did they make the right move? Or is, is Holmes being be being too predictable? I think it, it it's it they they were doing their due diligence. They I'm sure they wanted to see see him succeed here. But he's been a failure as a Detroit Lion. He ha- he really has. Now, injury took place, so I can't get mad at him for that. Injuries do happen. His third year came along. He started playing well. And like I said, eventually he started playing a little bit worse as the year went on. Started showing up a little bit on injury report. Got hurt. And eventually he was benched. He was out of favor with this with this coaching staff. So he had a foot out the door. He had a foot out the door. And then and Brad Holmes went and replenished this whole secondary with with, with 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 two corners, and then you got guys like, and they brought in a guy like C.J. Garner Johnson who can play the corner spot, preferably nickel, but he can play the corner. So it gives him it gives him flexibility to move guys like Cam Sutton. Could Cam Sutton play right cornerback? Could he be our starting right cornerback or left or whatever? I think, but I think Emmanuel Moses is the left guy, the, the starting left cornerback of this team. So he's gone, man. He he's gone. You know, and you, and you got guys still like Ify Malafonu, who's been a little bit of a disaster. He's he's in the safety room, but he's played some corner. He was drafted as a corner, and you know um, they're going to have to get guys like C.J. Garner Johnson, obviously, who's never coming out the field. What's going on with Tracy Walker and Kirby Joseph? Those three safeties, yeah, they ain't coming off the field. So I could see a move of Cam Sutton possibly going to right corner, and you might see a lot of C.J. Garner Johnson. Going to nickel. Or they're drafting somebody. Or they're drafting a corner high. Which kind of feel maybe that could be it. But I don't really know. I don't really know. And I don't think anybody knows. It's all speculation at this point. But the reality of it is. Jeff Okuda is no longer a Detroit Lion. He's an Atlanta Falcon. He's not a terrible, terrible football player. I just, he just, he was drafted way too high. I remember when we drafted him. There was two guys I wanted before him. Chase Young, and I wanted Isaiah Simmons. Young went to the Redskins at the time, now they're the Commanders, and um, uh, Isaiah Simmons went like, I don't remember what he went overall, but we passed on Isaiah Simmons. He went to Arizona eventually, and we took Jeff Okuda. He was my third option. You know, I wasn't on the Herbert train, the quarterback I should have been, but I wasn't on the Herbert train, and um, he was my third option. And I, I tried, man. I tried to back him up as much as I could, you know, not trying to be too much of a homer because I knew he had talent, but he's, he was never a true cornerback, true number one cornerback in the NFL, and he and he wasn't one for the Detroit Lions. And he's going to a room. I think they got they got a couple of good corners over there in Atlanta. So you know, good luck to Jeff Okuda. I I, I wish him the best. Best. I have no hard feelings. I'm not going to bash him, but he really did nothing here, man, and and, and, and it's a shame. And it's a shame. And to everybody who thought we were getting a first, second, third round pick for him is beyond delusional. I was hoping for a fourth rounder, but it ended up being a fifth. And I called it. I I said it yesterday on social media. I said, expect a fifth. So there's people having meltdowns right now saying Holmes doesn't know what he's doing. How can we only get that? Learn football. That's all I have to say. You have to learn the game. You have to really learn the game. Just because someone's drafted high doesn't mean you're getting something high in return, especially if he doesn't pan out. And he never panned out in Detroit, bottom line. That's it. Been going on too long with this video. So that's it, guys. Jeff Okuda's gone, traded for a fifth-round pick to Atlanta Falcons. We carry on. We are are going to be okay. We are going to be okay. But thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for for paying attention. Thanks for hanging in there. Uh, Don't forget to hit the subscribe button in the bottom right. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Get all my videos. And don't forget to like, comment, share this out. Kuda's out of the building. What do you guys think, man? No panic in Motown. Everybody take it easy. One pride, go Lions. Boom, let's go. Stocking up those draft picks.